have a breakdown. Uh, I'm trying to understand. Um, you know so much about it. You are in the field of... Um, yes, so I'm a practical nurse. Needle. Okay, you are a practical nurse and you are the perfect person to deal with something like this because you have been through all yeah. the stages, basically. Yes. So, she's telling us, this is Natalie, Natalie is telling us about, about depression. Because she pointed it out to me, De being depressed and going through depression is two different things. Which I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. Because we can depress over something and it matter if we are too weak or, or so, in or out of mood, but going through a depression is a whole nether ball game. Yeah. You're basically right? like in a world by yourself, basically. Right. We're in a, you're in a world by yourself and everybody deals with it different. So she told us about the day before the, 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 the postpartum um, depression where you have some senses where you can hurt your baby, you don't want to touch the baby, you don't leave the baby. Now we've seen it happen many times. And yeah. We've seen it happen in Jamaica and a lot of people cuss the mother. Because we see it happen but we don't know what happened. So we just blame the mother because why? Oh, could a wicked mother run leave the baby like this? We could move a customer, but she's been going through a, a depression while they have the other depression where you've been assaulted. You have the one where you've been molested and that and you feel life because that what they call that. What if somebody has been molested, what they call that, what they call that for the, 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 the depression, what, what's the name for that? Um, so it's, it's sexual trauma. It's depression is depression. You have depression that's brought on by something traumatic. You have depression that's brought on by stress. So it could just be you living in a situation where you just can't see your way out. That can lead to depression. So it's your social factors in your life, like growing up where you hear gunshot every day, you don't know where your next mood is coming from. That can also lead somebody to go into depression. Right. So there's different ways of ending up there. Some Jamaicans, someone says, some Jamaicans don't understand and they will say she mad out and take it for a joke. A tool That's tool. true. Because I had my daughter in Jamaica, right? I had my daughter at UA and nobody educated me on postpartum. Nobody educated me on depression. So popped the baby out, came home, crying all the time, feeling sad. Like, I still held her and I still breastfeed and stuff, but I just had, like, this cloud of sadness over me and just kind of feeling detached. And I was basically on my own until eventually I got over it. So, I mean, there's not much education when you're pregnant in Jamaica, and I think there needs to be. Like, there needs to be when you go to the clinic whether it be like a brochure they give you or they just briefly talk over it. But I like, I read somewhere where someone was saying that like they didn't know about this and they're going through it right now. So Jamaica does not provide a lot of education when it comes to mental health. They don't. Yeah, that is true. That's a hundred percent, thousand percent true. We, were, we are not educated enough. America. And it usually starts from childhood, like, a kid can be depressed, like, oh, God, like, I got to see all my tests. So they'll be sad for a few weeks. But for my daughter, she became withdrawn, right? So she didn't I... want to play with friends anymore. She would be in her room all day. She would want to sleep friend, all day. Been, she had a, she had, when she looked at her first time, she was so overprotective of this youth. Mm -hmm. To see him grow up and become a man now. I even a drive because that's a, has been my friend for years. I know her, she love cry. She cry, cry, cry. Not even <laughs> Justin, but just when Justin Timbalik has a cry me a river. She pull up from out river already. She cry for everything. She cry for everything. I don't know if she still a cry or I want and don't know. But she got two fear hard deal. Richie, you think the people are going to come at the party? Richie? They must have a party, they're going to flop. Richie? This, that, that. Remember, say, one of the times she, she, she had to move, like she had to change state. 
Yeah. But she a good cause. She don't want so long. I mean, I have a reason. Because she look, she's not actually pretty. Right? But mm-hmm. she couldn't hold back her tears. If you just have a conversation with her, because she a good treat, no furniture in the house. And yeah. You can't look at a person and right. tell the person. You couldn't tell if she's not talk. You couldn't tell if she's not talk. Yeah. You couldn't tell if she's not talk. But no people wouldn't even know this. I just told she has said, no, make me even talk. And I can tell you, like, a lot of majority of the people I interact with will never know I'm depressed. Like, I can tell you depressed persons that are going through depression or even those that are, like, bipolar or whatever, you will never, like, th- when you meet them, you'll think that their world is perfect. I can like, tell you this about never me. know. I was depressed when my daughter just got accepted into university. I was depressed because I didn't know where it was coming from. I was so depressed that I did not have an erection. I couldn't have an erection. I wake up and say, I do this. No man is sick. That is a sign of depression. No man is sick. This thing now work. I say, I do this. I must know depression. I mean, know depression, depression. I mean, I said, I picked me up for go to school, you know. And then I just close my visa now, you know. And I say, yo, I picked me up for go to school, I say, yo, I'm going to sell my car. So I'm going to go through depression. I'm going to go through it. If I tell people, then I can't. I'm not going to know. Yeah. I can't know. Because me, I can't be a burden good. I'm a child for the middle of the middle of the middle of the daughter, no, because I don't want to feel like say, I see me depressed. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing, too. I tried. Right? So, somebody oh. was saying that you had functional depression, which is true. So, functional depression, you get up and you go about your daily business like nothing is wrong, but once you step through that door, it hits you. And then you have the depression where you just can't get out of bed, you can't stop crying, you don't okay. like. You don't want to take a shower for days. When we look, when we look and say, because I found my, my depression that I went through in that scenario, I wanted the best for my child. And I was willing to do anything to get my child to finish university. And I told them, I always tell my kids, once they don't see me worry, don't worry. Because that will fix it. You don't worry about it. I remember how much time I got England. I got England five years straight. Every time I get the deposit, I get it. And when I get the balance, I get it. I get it. I say, yo. And the late fee, them, and she said, Daddy, you know, the late, um, the, 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 the semester, you don't pay for it. I say, yeah, man, I know, man. Don't pay feet, man. Everything's doing good. Mm-hmm. And each time it is late, they put on thousand dollar upon the money. Yeah, they put on a fee, yeah. They put on a fee. So, I just tell her, I said, don't worry. But it does work out. The most I just make everything does work out. That even though where, 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 the, the, where I pay the late fee, so she never has to de register for nothing. Mm-hmm. And that was great. That I was a man who was willing to do whatever it takes. But yeah. everybody who is going through this, this depression thing, don't lose hope and don't lose confidence in yourself. Sometimes it can be overbearing. Because I take mental illness seriously, you know, because my mother was a mental patient. Yeah. And I went to Bellevue. Every Christmas I used to go to Bellevue. I know Bellevue, like the back of my hand. <laughs> 16 Windward Road. Oh, yeah, my God. And I know right that, there. I know that a lot of these people who work at these places, they don't like the patients. They just like them salary. They don't really love them because it's a lot of noise, a lot of these because when a person gets quite stirred up, it, 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 it's hard. I went there and it's not easy. A lot of 
families leave their loved ones only and never look up on them. Yeah, that is very true. That's why I, I, I am a person who I like to talk about mental mental illness because I have been there. And when I go to this place, I see it. Them, 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 them. It's like they don't know how to deal with you. No. And to sit, to, to sit, to sit, to sit to sedate you, they will even use violence. Which is Just not, which is not the answer, right? Which is well, as I said, like I'm lucky, like I'm in Canada, so we learned that sedation is a, is a form of restraint, and it doesn't help the person being depressed like it, it it does nothing for that person and i was also reading where someone says here that people that are depressed need to be around others yes we do need to be around others but sometimes we have unknowingly isolated ourselves from everyone around us and then to get back into that friendship is hard because it was like your mind is physically telling you that you know what, they're going to judge you, they're not going to understand, it's better if I'm just by myself, nobody gets me, but you literally want to be around people, like, you physically want to, but you just can't, like, just simply going through that door to go to a party or to go meet up, it's hard, it, it, it's hard when your brain and your body is telling you not to do something, and then somebody also said something about therapy, now, I hope, somebody I said, the question is different from misery, Somebody yes. just comment that, that, that very true the person also. is different. And this is that person who will lose everything. That this is person that she lose everything and is an overcomer. Yeah, but see, not so, everybody can everybody not everybody's the same. So you can lose everything and it doesn't affect you mentally. But I can lose everything and that throws off my whole it, it throws off everything. Right? So everybody deals with everything differently. You might not think you're depressed, but if you're really supposed to sit down and we're supposed to do a survey on her, she might show signs of depression, but she doesn't realize it because she calls it something else. So that's the next thing, right? What you call misery, really looking at it, could be depression. You're going through, a, you're going through like a moment of being depressed. So is it really misery or are you really just going through a period of you're having a rough time, you're having all these emotions and you're feeling sad. You I don't know what to do. I, I make your ball out. There you go. Because I can't fuck fun too. Most people get depressed because I fuck fun. And Man, you have to be... I have to be honest. Have to be I've gone through a depression. I've, I've been depressed for a bit for a relationship. I have. Because I fell in love. I thought he was going to be my prince charming we're going to build a life together then it didn't work out yeah i was sad for a few weeks i was yeah but then you get over it that's the beauty of being depressed you get over it whereas depression you just can't see your way out you're just looking down a very narrow dark tunnel and every time you feel like you're reaching the end of it it gets even longer because you remember i know we have to be real there's a lot of people who go through different types of depression. You have some yeah. people who money depressed them because they used to have the money and they can't get to have it like how they used to. They have it. Yeah, so you're depressed. But that's only for a period yeah. of time. Right? It's only right. for a period of time. And you go through, and you go through these scenarios and you say, wow. Nobody don't like me, I don't like people. Because, <laughs> to me, I always need a listener. You know? I am a good listener. I am a good listener. I try to listen and to understand people. Because if they don't listen, they're not going to have. They don't have to know. You're going to understand. Yeah, you're going to lack understanding. Right, so I try to listen. And this is a thing where I have learned. Sometimes someone will call you, Natalie. And they want to vent. You have to leave them to vent. Yes. They didn't call you for advice. And a lot of us need to learn this. They call you. They just want to know you're on the phone. And you just listen to them. And cuss and cuss and cuss and cuss and cuss and Yes. Just, they just want to know you're dead. And when they hear them pass, they, they say, yeah, listen to me. Yeah, man. Me, listen, yeah, man. man. Mm-hmm. The woman and her man have problem. Lindsay. The woman and her man have problem. And she wants me. She hates me. Why? 
Me and the boys. Jesus Christ. Him. Oh, me say. Him me chat up in a lot of people. You know what the boy do? I said, go down. I said, go on. I said, that's life. I let you go say one thing. Me and the boys. So why you don't leave him? Him do so much thing. Why you don't leave him? Let me know if I eat you. Because she never called you to tell us to tell her man. She just called you to be a listening ear in that moment. She never called you and tell us. She just called you and tell us how she feel right now, you know. She just called you to listen. And you go jump and tell the woman left her man. And then she go back to her man when time she and him talk. Who you think she not going to deal with? No, you. And then the same man I go tell her, say, Hold on, here by Galea. She will come on. Come in Galea. And then conversation and need the whole Jamaica and the whole world. The whole world need to come in for the conversation. Um, yeah, I never said I was bipolar. Sorry. So when I was saying the whole bipolar part, I was actually talking about a patient. So that is why I'm not bipolar. I've been diagnosed with clinical depression. So I'm not, I'm not bipolar. Sorry if that was any misunderstanding. And I'm not trying to diagnose anyone. In Canada, I don't know about Jamaica, but a nurse, as nurses, you're not allowed to diagnose anyone. So I'm not trying to diagnose anyone i'm just like giving you guys like the rundown if that makes any sense one thing me you know i had a first year that me talk to like talk to me like you have to aim like i'm saying hey. listen i'm jamaican i, I say the aim but not that much it, 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 it really say. annoys me it, yeah, it talk annoys to me a good while now yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you come on and oh me, greetings no. and blessings today is my earth strong Happy birthday. Oh, yes, it was the year 47 today. Wow, happy birthday. Thank you. But the thing is, with depression, I came to this country and I've been depressed for years, but my depression is like on the suicidal. It's on a suicidal, yeah. Expression. Yeah, so I had to go through all the counseling, all this and that. But you see, with depression, it's a feeling of helplessness. Yes. Until I, be, I, this is what I said to myself. Why did God allow me to go through all this? Because I've been through, I was from the ghetto in Jamaica and I've been through hell. And so coming here and go through another portion of hell, it caused me to break. And so I end up with very bad depression. And I realized with depression, it's a feeling of helplessness. Mm -hmm. Until we can get over that feeling because it makes us feel like we're alone yeah you're stuck you're stuck and nobody else understands and nobody else know what we are going through and it's just me 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 but when we overcome that side of it then we're on to a, a winner if that makes sense it does but it depends on what it depends on was your depression caused by trauma or is it like an Listen, imbalance in the brain? So they, getting over I the never, trauma yeah, can help yeah. you, but if it's like yeah. ab imbalance in the brain where you need medication to kind of correct that imbalance. Yeah, yeah. So there, yeah, there's like different, that's just for, not for you. I will just, I'm just clarifying for those on that's texting that you have the brain imbalance and then you have the one that's brought on by trauma or a sudden a sudden change because trauma can be anything can be no, moving you to see, a different the, country the beauty about my 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 life i think even though i've been through ellen back i was always protected in a way where when i got my first depression medication i was renting from a raster man and i went to him and i told him and he said daughter don't take that the moment you take that daughter you're going to be dependable and so even though I was going through, I was going through, I decided I'm going to listen to him mm -hmm. and I'm going to fight through whatever this is I'm going through because depression sometimes is explainable. People, the ordinary layman won't understand it. Yes, that is it's true. just you who are going through it. And one of the things that I gather from depression was, again, it's a feeling of helplessness. And if you can cross that feeling of helplessness, then you're onto a winner. Because that's the point I had to get at. 
Because I, I was even dating a man that was very depressed. And his depression was just constantly crying. Crying that, like what Richard feeling said, not even the penis could have stand up. Yeah. Definitely. And I had to be patient with the man. You know what I mean? Because I knew what he was going through. But again, you have to do the work because it takes work. It's not an overnight thing. A lot of people won't understand it. And another thing, again, depression can make you even. People come at your house and you don't even do nothing at your house and they say you're nasty. You're yeah, tell me to avoid that. And they don't know that you are, at, you're at, you know, you're at a loss. Yeah, because I remember I was going through, I was, there were days when I, I couldn't even take, I could not even get up to take a shower. Yes. And I have a daughter, okay? Listen. At this time, she was like 10, 11. And God has blessed me so much that my daughter is able to, she's very independent. Yeah. Right? So she can get up and make her breakfast. Her school is just down the road. So she can walk. She, I allow her to like walk with her friends to school. Right? Because I can stay on my balcony and I can see her school. So I, I'm, I'm good. But there were days where I would go three days without taking a shower. Like physically, I just could not stop <laughs> crying. I yep. could not tell you oh, why I'm crying. Uh, 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 I could yeah. not eat. I could not get up out of my bed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? And a lot of people three days not taking a shot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right, and yeah. I could not. I could not tell you. So, and eventually, just to correct that imbalance, I had to go on medication. Okay. And sometimes every medication is addictive. Somebody did say that, mm -hmm. and especially. Medication for mental illnesses, they can be addictive, but that mm -hmm. is why you're supposed to take them as recommended and never just stop your prescription abruptly. Like, don't just stop your prescription because you're feeling better. Because then that causes other problems, right? But if you take the medication and then when you and your doctor feel like you don't need it anymore, then yeah. slowly he'll reduce your dosage and you can get off. That way you're not addictive. But sometimes... I've had to be on medications because I, I was just crippled with my yeah. depression sometimes. And I so heard you different. said earlier about people said to pray. Yes. I must admit, when people said to pray, you think they don't understand what I'm going through. But one of the things I must say that helped me, I'm a strong believer in God. Mm -hmm. I don't believe nothing I mean, with him, nothing is impossible. And I do pray a lot. I used to pray a lot. And one of the questions I used to ask is, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? You know, what is the reason? What is, you know, what am I, you know, you understand? And for me personally, I can tell anybody this who is going through depression, whether it be critical, functional, suicidal, if we do the work in, if we just believe that we are not alone, because that's what it does. It's, it corners you. It makes you feel like you're just in this box and you're the only one in it. We have to tell ourselves that hey, we are not alone and we can overcome. We have I to remember totally, that. I totally agree with that. But yeah, then, because sometimes... I we have to remember that it doesn't work for everybody. What true, works for you... But, I know, but the thing is, we have to understand that we have to bounce ideas off of each other. And for me personally, even with my daughter with anxiety and all this other stuff, when I said stuff to her, she said, oh, what worked for you don't necessarily mean Which it is will true. work for me. But, there is a but, a lot of people would put that out there without even trying. Without even trying. The only way we can say things don't work unless we try. And if we true. try... We but give ourselves a period and going it back, work within. Yeah. Going back to what Richie said, if I'm having an episode and I call my mom, yeah. I don't want you to tell me to pray. I want yeah. you to let me vent and yeah, tell you yeah, how yeah. I'm feeling right now, what yeah. I'm going through, my perspective. And I think that's the problem that even my patients, like when they're talking, they say their family don't get it. Because I'm telling her how I feel, what I'm going through. And she's going to tell me, okay, so why not do this? No, I just need you to listen to me at that point. Yeah. Let me get out how I'm feeling. I'm not negating that prior doesn't work because trust me, some of the things I have survived, if I did not have a praying grandmother, 
and a praying mother, I don't think I would have survived half of them. Yeah, yeah. Right? So prayer does work. But when I'm going through what I'm going through and I'm feeling how I'm feeling, don't tell me to go pray or you'll get over it soon. It, it doesn't work that way. It, it doesn't. It, it, it really, sometimes it pushes the person further into isolation. That is true. That is true. Yeah. With, but the thing, with, even with my daughter, because I, I don't know, I want to believe. I want to believe, even though I've been through certain things and things happen, I just believe can if we if we just fight through it then basically if we just fight through it if we just get out of our head that nobody nobody understands if we just get out of our head that we are alone if we just kind of get these things you know out of our head we'll we'll kind of see cuz now I'm not <laughs> depressed anymore cuz I'm not claiming it in Jesus name because and this is how I, I realize that with the life it's finished. Oh, it's not. No, let me tell yes, you, I do agree. In England with, nice. with depressed oh, people oh. having children, sometimes it can, it can be dangerous, right? Because it can come down to you neglecting your child. And I'm embarrassed to say that at one point, I was neglecting my child, right? Don't like I, I was a neglective pa a parent, so it can be dangerous, right? And it also depends on the age of the child. And one thing people have to understand that is depression is genetic. So we're talking about genetics later on before. Depression is actually genetic. So if you have persons in your family that have suffered from depression, but what you have if a you child, didn't know? What if you don't know that? Because I'm not sure if I know anyone in my family that had depression, to be honest. The sad thing is, um, for every 10 persons that you meet in your life, mm -hmm. nine of them are actually going through depression. Or depressed. Nine, of, nine out of 10 persons you meet on an Marvelous. everyday Remember basis. That, but it's just, some, it's just a different level. And I was also reading something about medications. Every medic... Um, some persons, when they do take the depression medications, mm -hmm. they might have side effects. Like, it does sometimes makes you more depressed. So you can be taking a depression medication to feel better, but a side effect of it can be yeah, that big. it can make you more depressed. So that is why you have to work closely with your doctor See, I to recognize you. whether or not you know, the medication is making you worse. And they might tell you to keep taking the medication mm -hmm. despite it making you depressed because after you go over that hump, better. it might lift your yeah. it might lift your spirits. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to be very attentive. And you, like for me, until I found the perfect medication that worked for me, I went through like six different medications. So you will go through different medication, different levels until you find the one. It can take you up to a year sometimes two years to find the perfect dosage, the perfect medication that works for you. So it's a long road. You don't just yeah. get up and just get one medication and it works. You're not usually that lucky. Not usually. For me personally, I chose not to go on medication. Not that I be, I was advised by a Rastaman, which I thought was an intervention. And from then I decided I wouldn't take the medication that they give to me. I would basically just work through my things. So I, I had a lot of... Um, no, I'm not just... Sorry, I don't mean to... I'm not just talking about in Canada. I'm just... I'm talking about yeah. overall, right? So yeah, even if yeah. you're in Jamaica and you're depressed and you go to a doctor, yeah, you're going to have to try a few medications before you find one that works. Yeah. This, is, this is a universe... The universal treatment yeah. of depression on a whole once you're diagnosed you don't always go on medication at first once you're diagnosed yeah. they might recommend therapy but therapy doesn't work for everyone not everyone likes to sit down and talk about their problems to a total stranger right mm -hmm. and in jamaica therapy is extremely expensive and there's a waiting list if it's free right so the doctor might say, would you like to try this medication? You have the right to refuse. But if you try the medication, there's a possibility that it might not work for you. The medication might make you more depressed. Or you might not exactly. of the machine, exactly. of the medication, until six months, three to six months after start taking the medication. So that's another reason why 
persons don't really like the medication because it takes so long to work. So that's in general for every country, Jamaica and Canada, and every other country. Just to clarify. So where are you at now in terms of how you feel? Me, I have functioning depression, so... Functional depression. So like you kind of... Yeah, like I can go about my day's work. I'm not on any medication right now because I've started to deal with my issues and I've started to go to counseling and